Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how does a reversing valve and a heat pump work? So the reversing valve's job is to change the directional flow of the refrigerant between heating mode and air conditioning mode. And I'm going to be taking in for an up-close look at each of the components that make up the reversing valve, so I'm going to be going over how it works. First, I want you to know that this single pipe right here is always the discharge from the compressor. So same thing right here, and same thing right here. So this is three different reversing valves. These two were cut out of systems that range from three tons to five tons. This one right here was out of a mini split unit. So if this is always a discharge, you always have the center of the three pipes is always a suction to the compressor. Same thing right there and same thing right there. So what happens is either these two are connected or these two are connected. And the, the leftover pathways are gonna be connected. So I'm going to go over and take you to a heat pump system so we can see the refrigerant pathways when they're installed on a heat pump. Then we're going to come back here and investigate each of the components. Now we're looking down on the inside of an outdoor unit heat pump and the reversing valve is down in the lower center of this picture. So you see that the top tube is connected to the top of the compressor. That is the discharge from the compressor, it goes through a muffler that's not a filter dryer, that's a muffler, and it enters into the reversing valve on the top. And in air conditioning mode, if the slide is over on the left-hand side, it's gonna connect the, the bottom center tube and the bottom left tube. And so what that means is the discharge from the compressor is going to be traveling basically straight down into the, the lower right-hand tube, and it's gonna be going into the outdoor coil. So the discharge in this case in air conditioning mode is going to be going to the outdoor coil to reject heat there. Since the slide is over between the center and the left pipe, what's going to happen is at the indoor evaporator coil, you have the low pressure vapor traveling through the vapor service valve into the reversing valve and out through the center tube on the reversing valve. It enters into the accumulator tank and then the refrigerant travels out of the accumulator tank and into the compressor. In heating mode, you have the slide over to the right hand side and that's gonna connect the bottom center and the bottom right tube, which means that the discharge coming from the compressor enters into the top of the reversing valve and it connects over on the bottom lower left-hand tube. So what happens is you're sending your hot discharge gas to the indoor coil. So in that case, it's rejecting the heat at the indoor coil to provide heat inside the building. At the same time, the bottom lower right tubes are connected and so the outdoor coil acts as the evaporator in heating mode and you're absorbing heat from the outdoor air into the refrigerant and then the refrigerant's traveling into the reversing valve on the bottom lower right which connects over to the center tube and then that goes to the accumulator and into the compressor. And if you want to learn more about the refrigeration cycle of a heat pump in heating mode and in air conditioning mode, check out the several videos we have linked down in the description section below. And make sure you check out our book on pages 27 to 32 as we discuss the refrigeration cycle step by step. Now let's get back to each of the little components that make up the reversing valve. So you have this slide right here and then you have the inner section which is right here and this is what's connecting from here to here. And so you press this this way, it connects from here to here and you see that there is a little gap here and there's Teflon, that's a Teflon seal and you can see that right here. That seal is not made except for this discharge pushing downwards on this. It's exerting force onto the top of this and that's what seals it. However, it does need room to be able to move from side to side without getting jammed up. Now the reason that this is moving from side to side is because there is a, a tube in the bottom right that you can see right there and there is a tube on the lower left as you can see right there. And so on the back of this reversing valve, you're gonna notice a, a pilot valve. And the pilot valve exerts force onto the side, either this side or this side to move the slide on the inside. And so you're gonna have pressure on both sides. However, one is gonna be a greater pressure than the other. One's gonna be the discharge and one's gonna be the low pressure suction from the system. And so that's what's gonna apply pressure from side to side. And this right here is a magnetic solenoid. So you have to have your electrical magnet solenoid right here and you're applying, in this case, 24 volts to this. And it's gonna pull the solenoid on the inside. It's gonna pull it back because there's a spring on the inside that's always pressing it forward. And so I'll take you in to show you what that looks like. 
but on the inside of here, it's like a little mini reversing valve. It's the same thing that's on the inside of here, except, except smaller. So I'll take you in to show you that. So here you have a little mini reversing valve. So you have these three tubes and they are on a flat brass plate. And then you have your, your little rubber channel here that will connect the center to the right or the center to the left, depending on the position of this slide. And so it's either going to be here or here. And you have this little spring is applying force downwards to hold that rubber insert in place. But it's not a lot of movement. And on the side right here, there's a spring. And that spring will be up against here, the, the end. And so you have this iron core sitting inside of this stainless steel shell. And you have a spring on the back. So in the off position, this is going to be forward. And it when you're, you're powering the electrical solenoid, you're pulling the iron core back this way and connecting the, the two tubes to the left, the center and the left-hand side. So that's how this assembly works back and forth. Now, sometimes these are not rubber, but they're Teflon instead. This one has a Teflon piece on the inside right here. And we have a magnet just to show the, the sliding of the iron core on the inside. So I just wanted to show you how if you apply a magnetic field on the outside, you can get this to move but in this case right here, you have your, your Teflon piece. So, so that's what it looks like on this one. I also wanted to point out that you have your discharge right here. And so if the center and the right tubes were connected, then the discharge and the left hole would be connected. And if the center and the left were connected, the discharge would go around the iron core over to here and connect over to this right hand tube. Now, as far as problems are concerned, you can imagine if you get a little gunk in there, you know, maybe from not brazing with nitrogen or maybe you had a compressor burnout or something like that, it doesn't take much to jam up one of these reversing valves. Likewise, if you overheated uh, the tubes right here and you have that Teflon seal, that Teflon seal right here or right here could get damaged. So this right here or this on the side. So that's some of the issues that you could have occurring on a reversing valve. And so this, this may not seal properly onto that brass plate. And so it may not make it all the way. And so to test if you have a problem with a reversing valve, you want to take a temperature measurement between the two suction lines. So if you are noticing that this is the, the low pressure, low temperature line, and this one is, then you want to come away from this reversing valve, maybe say eight inches or something like that away from the body here and you're going to take two temperature measurements you're going to tape a k-type temp sensor on both of these and maybe you can put some insulation on them as well and you're looking for a, a large temperature change basically that's occurring so if you have more than say five six degrees and you know that you have a problem but when you're checking the, the suction lines uh, that basically you just have the refrigerant going through the small slide and so it shouldn't exchange too much heat on this reversing valve so a lot of times it's closer to lower than one degree of a temperature exchange you just don't want to condemn a reversing valve because the refrigerant is exchanging heat on this body and you certainly don't want to check the temperature change across the reversing valve on the discharge lines because you're definitely exchanging a lot of heat on this large body of the reversing valve itself because the refrigerant travels around the slide so you're basically looking for a large temperature change across the two suction lines, whichever those are, and depending on what mode you're in. Another problem that could occur is when you're applying power to your electrical solenoid. So this is just a wire coil, and you're creating a magnetic field around the stainless steel shell. When that's occurring and you have a problem with your reversing valve switching from side to side, you could have a problem with just your pressure itself if you happen to be low on refrigerant. So you got to make sure that you're semi close to the accurate charge. Uh, otherwise, this reversing valve will not work properly because it won't be able to apply enough pressure to move the slide on the inside. If you want to learn more about preparing a system for a refrigerant, checking the charge and troubleshooting, as well as the accumulator, the reversing valves, and a lot of different other scenarios we have. Here's some metering devices. We have troubleshooting airflow problems. We have troubleshooting air conditioning systems with the different scenarios. Um, we have different charging methods that you shouldn't use. We have the pump down procedure, system preparation before adding refrigerant. So all the different tools. So the recovery machine, just a lot of different information that you want to know when you're 
installing and servicing air conditioning and heat pump systems. So make sure to check our book out over at Amazon and also at our website at aecservicetech.com. We also have a thousand question workbook along with the answer key to test your knowledge just to be able to apply what you're learning in our book. Also make sure to check out all the free resources we have over at the website at aecservicetech.com such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, the quizzes, the podcasts, and also the Q&A. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.